You ready? Let's do oh, this. Let's do it. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I guess we'll uh, approve the minutes. Move to approve the minutes. Hi, sir. All in favor? Okay. How about the bills? I'll move to approve the bills. I second. <laughs> oh, sorry. No. Oh. <laughs> Did you do all in favor? All in favor? Okay. Uh, the the agreement. Yes, where we're at on that, that's the MOU for the law enforcement stuff. Um, we had met before last month's meeting, if you remember, and uh, they asked for a couple of small changes. Made those, got them back. We've been again, and I've got just a couple more to do. I'm here the last couple weeks. Our schedules just haven't been jived. So we'll move that over the next month as well. Then we should have that much done by then. Okay. It won't have any drastic changes for what you guys have. It's just they want to move on. Okay. The last one was under the previous sheriff. And, well, anyway, kind of like that. Okay. Right away from it. So you asked me to canvas around a little bit, kind of see what was out there from um, the Gill's request for the manhole covers and things. Yeah. Um, so I looked, uh, so Aberdeen and Firth pretty well don't have anything. I uh, don't have really any ordinances in place. Uh, Black and Nile Falls, they grab those. Um, they require it to your public works director, you know, specifications. And then they both have the one year warranty. Um, but that's really about it, they have an ordinance. Um, so the two questions I have for you guys, obviously anytime you pass an ordinance that requires a permit, Robin's going to be there to issue permits. So you want to be kind of careful on how much more work you create, you know, from that side of things. Um, and then second, whether you want Brian to be kind of in control of that, or whether you want to get, you know, completely into the specifications. Um, so I, I need a little bit of direction from you guys on just how detailed you want to get on that. Um, this is this is this is a trenching, yeah, the trenching and your right of ways. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, whether you want to have a lot of detail, so like Gill's example, you obviously have a lot of detail in it. We can certainly do that. Um, but the first stage is obviously, do you want to issue a permit? Um, I say first, the Aberdeen do not. They don't have any system set up for that at all. Black and Nile Falls obviously do. But the main part of theirs is the one year warranty, you know, for any selling and stuff that goes. But any inspections or anything like that, obviously that's now on Ryan's shoulders. Any permit you're going to issue, that's on Robin's shoulders. So, need a little direction on how you want to do that. Whether you want to require a permit, whether you want to be specific in it. Okay. I guess, uh, And yes, but if I So, anyway, that's kind of where the other cities are. So, with that, I guess just. Do, how many cities about our size? The, the cities your size, like Aberdeen and Burton, don't have okay. anything in the ordinances. Do they, do they require permits? No, no, they don't require anything, yeah. Black and Burton, so Aberdeen and Burton. Black and Burton, Idle Falls do, but then they just have their specifications on hand with the public first guy to be, you know, a true direction. But then they both of those do have the one year warrant. Like say, I already referred nothing. And to yeah. issue a permit, like, what necessarily does that entail? Does that be filed somewhere? With you. Like yeah. Thing. So, I mean, you, so they would have to come to you, get a permit, say, hey, we're going to do this, because then you would calendar that somehow to tell Brian, hey, go check and see what they're doing. You know, so like I say, every time you pass an ordinance, you know, or pass a requirement like that, puts work on you guys, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's if you want to require a permit. Right. If you get, all you want to do is have it, have it out there saying, hey, this is what you need to do with that one year. And you, and you then, that. then you can come back that. on them if it fails. So, I mean, honestly, the simplest probably way is to, you know, at, at Brian's direction, I mean, you know, there, but you want the one year warranty. But you may not want the permit. 
Double-edged sword on all of it. All right, so. Okay. I guess that's what we need to figure out. What would you recommend? I guess my question too is, and I kind of asked this before, you can't hold the company liable without it? Well, so I mean, if they come in and damage your roads, it's, you, you potentially can, but it's obviously a lot easier if you can say, hey, no, here's our ordinance. You know, these are our laws. Um, otherwise, you're just kind of out there. I would definitely think you would want the one year warranty. Yeah. You know, and, and something that says the road has to be put back to substantially the same condition. Um, and that not be necessarily a, a permit. Right. Well, and again, that's up to you guys. But, you know. Yeah. But if you have a substantially the same condition on a one year warranty, that may solve your problem. And if it doesn't, then you can always advantage do something different later. So do you think it would be better to just go with the permit to begin with or just the one year warranty? It really well, sure, you know, it's kind of up to you guys for Robin's workload. You know, because if you're going to require a permit, then you got to be here to issue permits. You know. Which I think the two days a week would be fine. I mean, isn't that your hours now? I yeah, and it's sometimes just another... I am here more. Right. And I did change the number to cell phone, so I am available. Yeah. It's just another task that Robin has to deal with. And I don't know how I... often that happens here on you or if it's. You know, is that it doesn't happen a ton. Are you talking five or six a year, or are you talking 20 a year? I, I don't know. What's that? I bet you will. I would think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, Just like Bill's house. Don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. watch them close. <laughs> but you know, you've, you've never had one. No. So I don't know how big of a problem you had. <laughs> I think if they were to come and do some. some work somewhere and there's a problem with this you know, with them and say hey. So I mean so that's up to you guys. Like I said, I just don't have to think of a problem you're really having with it. I've never heard anybody else complain. Yeah. But I have been here very long. Okay. Leave it for now? I, I, I think leave it for now. I, I'm guessing if somebody else does something and it has a problem and, and, and they don't come back and fix it, we want to do something like that. So it's not always a problem. I think that's probably because it doesn't happen very often. It might be just this is insurance. Just say, hey, put it on the books, no permit. Anyone they do, they have to have, give it, make sure they do a one year warranty. And then, yeah, and you don't really have to do anything else with it until someone fails to do, to, to, uh, do their work properly. And there's no, and there's no work on Robin. That's just you know until, until there's a failure, and then you have something to, and you have insurance there in that in the ordinance saying, hey, this is how it has to be. Okay, free insurance. And that's where I guess they go. Would they come back and look at our roads and be like, a little bit again, something like that? Well, that's, I mean, I think, I think, well, it would have to be you go to state this. something that it would be equivalent or better. Yeah, substantially yeah. some or better, you know, something like that. I think as you're just kind of doing your thing and you notice people maybe doing something, you can just kind of keep an eye on it and request as they're doing it. Say, hey, make sure you know. What does your counsel say? Yeah. I like the year, the one year thing because. At least then we have something in writing, right, Garrett, that we can fall back on. Yeah. And you say, he does, because or... if we hire, so if somebody accidentally hides an irreputable and they're going to be like, well, tough, at least then we have something. And I don't think we'll need it very often either, because I've never heard it happening, but does it, how much does it hurt to just put it on the books? Well, you know, I, last, last year I dug up my mom's sewer line and replaced it. And I didn't need a permit, and this was in Idaho Falls. And they just requested that just they come and look at it before we buried it to be sure that it was repaired, you know, to the most part properly for what we did. And so when we got done, we called them to come and inspected it real quick and said, fine, great. And we buried it and we were done. So I think something like that is like Brian could go and see just whatever. But we're talking our roads and not just the yard, right? That's fine. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, this is the roads. This is right. They do whatever they want in the yard. Yeah. Now they have to meet plumbing codes, and, you know, depending on what they're doing. But 
But as far as you guys are concerned, you're going to pay yard sales. Who cares? I don't know. I think it's a good idea that we're made aware of what's going on. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, just so we, like, I don't know, like, you don't want to be like, oh, we didn't know how there's a big. Well, if they cut into the road. Or, or they ruin something, you know, I think it's just good to know what's going on in case something does go Does that right. require a permit? Well, I mean, we back to them, do you want a permit or not? So that, what I've gathered, I think, is you probably want the substantially similar repair and a one-year warranty, but not a permit for now. Is that what I'm gathering? Well, they've got to come to the city and cut it into the road anyway, so they need that permission first. Well, so that would be a permit. You probably want to do a permit then. Because I don't think they got permission to cut into the road at Gales. No, they didn't. They just cut into the road. All right, fine. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> I would uh, I would do the permit. Okay. It's your right away. You don't yeah. want to know who's doing the work in your right away. Yeah. You want to have the opportunity to tell them like, what their requirements are, and you can charge for the permit. So I, I, the permit I think you're right. Process. When they when they when they do <coughs> the road and yeah. into Most the road, I think that really should require a permit to be repaired properly. Because yeah. your roads are your biggest asset in town, followed by your water and your sewer. And yeah, that, like you're putting gas lines there, you're gonna cut in. Them. Yeah. And all the utilities are accustomed to doing that, and the other does. Significant contractors are accustomed to doing that. I think they should, don't think that. should do that. Okay. So yes, on the permit. Then. Yeah, I think okay. so. I think let's 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 look into that because we do want to fix right. So what I'll do then is a, a yes on a permit, substantially similar, and then um, the one you want here. Yeah. yeah. There's no action items. We don't, want, we don't want people just coming kind of in the road thinking they can do whatever they want, just to do something. Uh, I think that's. Are you okay? I didn't realize that. Because they're required to, to post their permit somewhere in the, where they're working. Yeah, so I mean, you would, yeah, you, would have that, you would have to have that permit on them when they do it. So then that would be you policing it, obviously. Okay. So. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Do they need to set a price on the permit now that can be done later? As well, so we'll add that to the, so the, the ordinance would just say that the fee per resolution of council, and then we'll add that to your fee resolution. And then they can put the road back to the way it was. Okay. That sounds fair. Wait, let me ask this. You said add that to your fee resolution. So is there going to be ultimately two things? Well, so we'll get the permit set up, and then, but in the ordinance, we don't want to put the fee in the ordinance because then you have to change the ordinance every time you change the fee. So you'll have your fee resolution that has all your fees you know, on the sheet that we've done. That's just going to be a new one there. So, I mean, you know, ultimately we'll have to have a public hearing to increase to be able to add that fee, but that's not a big deal. It's just a new fee, so you got to add that public hearing. Yeah, I think, I think we'll still permit with the local one. You know, for now, the fee, the fee could be zero if you want. Yeah. And just as long as you know what you're doing and inspect it. Yeah, that's kind of why. Because your permit could be free for now that you don't have to have a public area of the resolution. I think that's okay, too, as long as... And just see how it goes. Yeah, and then we'll put it on your fee resolution, and then the next time you're changing fees, that could be one of them you could address as well, so you can do it all in the public area. Yeah. I mean, if you're talking five or six years, who cares? You know, if you're now get busy, you got a buck, so you might want to charge one time buck. Good. Okay, we'll move on. Um, budget hearing schedule. Oh, uh, we just need to schedule our budget hearing, which last year I know was in August. I have to have that into the county by April 30th. So, what's our meeting? April 30th? I have to have the schedule of it oh, into the county so they can post it mm -hmm. by April 30th. Um, so August 8th would be our do August. Do we normally do it in August? We did last year. Beyond that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's August and it's somewhere in there that we had it. Seems like I, we used to up the meeting a day because it had to be in the next. So it uh, has to be in, in, in September. September. I don't remember which date. Yeah, kind of mid September. 
Um, and I do want to do some budget visits before here anyways, so we'll be talking about it, but this would be like the finalized budget. So do you think hearing. August would work best? Yeah, I think August is good. That's what we I'm did fine last with August. year. I, I just don't know, I can't remember what we did in the past. August seems right, so I'm good with August. Are you? Isn't it too for August? Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so you got to have it in by, what, September? Middle of September? Yeah, that's what it's time to do whatever we need to do, right? And I will have some budget talks before then. <clears throat> Perfect. I'm good with August. What's your yeah, August, what, 15 is probably your? August 8th. 8th. Okay. Because the first Most, is the Thursday. Yeah. Screws it up when it's a. The Thursday, Thursday I hate Thursday. that. <laughs> that makes it really hard. Well, I don't, because I usually have two bad weeks of meetings and then two not so bad. Well, when the first falls on a Thursday, then I have three bad weeks. So, I think we have to prove that, right? Uh, yeah, I think most do. Just so it's clear in your minutes, just do a motion to schedule that. Or August at 7 p.m. Okay. okay. <clears throat> uh, just a quick thought on the right of these permits. When I was doing that sewer line, uh, when I was talking to the city about the falls, they said if you're going to go in the street, you have to be an insured bond. So uh, I think we should require that also if they're going to go in to the street. So like, like you guys, <clears throat> when you need to replace your sewer line, and they have to go into the street, they need to be insured and bonded to do that. So that their insurance, they're covered if something goes wrong. And they have to go in the street. So that's if we did. Right? That's what I'm saying. A company comes in and <clears throat> cut the street and do all that stuff, they have to be insured and bonded. I like that. So you can't personally do that. You need to hire somebody to go into the street. And you have to be a true model. Yeah. And I don't think so. We just repair what we need to do. Okay. Anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, the SLRF funds general funds and water funds. Okay, so I'll give you a little backstory. In 2022, City of Bayfault was given some COVID funds. It was like 87,000. And you have to fill out a report, like how you used it. And I kind of came in, of course, after that was done. And <clears throat> so I kind of thought that um, at first I thought, well, okay, so it's never been deemed used as something. But I did go home and did some research. And anything a million dollars or less, basically, you can just count it as revenue. So I've taken care of the report. I don't have to report on it anymore. Um, but this sheet that has the water things that need to be fixed, I am proposing because there is general funds available. And I did ask the auditor. He said, technically, you can use general funds for whatever. But she did recommend that I move them over to water. So um, I don't know that we can technically approve it in this meeting. I think you probably have to do it in a budget hearing to like shift some funds. Well, you could move it now if you need to get three periods yeah, done. And then you, when you open to shift your budget later, you'll take care of it. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, so I would like to take some funds from general funds to address some of these higher priority things that need to be fixed. And this list came from Robert from Mountain West. Um, and then we had another person come in from Rural Water, right? Yeah. Who kind of gave his opinion. He didn't agree totally with all of these, so I'll let Brian talk about that too. So again, the maintenance report, <coughs> these are gonna kind of <coughs> blend together. So, and that's kind of a, that list is kind of a generalized list. Robert Loftus from Mount West went through and, and he, he picked about everything in there that <laughs> should need a little care. And some of it we can do ourselves. Uh, it doesn't have to be 
And these prices, he he did kind of round up. Right. So I mean, we can't. That's not. Do you want that's me? not an exact quote. Um, so that you have those in front of you. Yeah, that's kind of an estimate. So I know one of the the big things that that we've been worried about is this the drives uh, for the 10 horsepower pump and the 10 horsepower pump is up and running like we reported oh, last month and that's the other thing that i wanted to point out i put in a copy of the electric bill i didn't give me a copy okay and so this is the bill that only for a half a month the 10 horsepower was running and you can see the difference of last year versus this year that's seven dollars a day already yeah, oh, it's crazy. It's a considerable savings. It really is. Because it that's started in on like the 13th. Seven dollars a day adds up. Yeah. yeah. So the downside is, because <laughs> there's always a downside, is the drive that we put in for that 10 horse pump. When Jeff Cook from IRWA, the I don't know water. He come in and looked at it, and it is running exactly how the system was designed to run. It's, they're called standalone pumps. The 10 horsepower is supposed to run in the winter, and in the summer when you need more water, you turn it off and you turn on the 30 horse pump. That's how they were designed. Ideally, like I talked in the last meeting, you would want the 10 horse pump to run year round. And the 30 horse pump would would communicate with the 10 horse and kick on only when it's needed. So in the middle of the night, right. in the middle of the night when everybody turns their water sprinklers on, or you know, so right. that kind of thing. Right now, we're not able to do that. I, so what's gotta, it going to take you in the car? The 30 horse, the the drive is about gone on it. Okay. That is one of the things that he listed here. Okay. They're also recommending a SCADA <coughs> upgrade. That's the control. It's a computer control that sits in the other room. Robert from from the state said, if it's working, mm -hmm. if we can if we can make the drives talk to each other and keep this SCADA unit, that's money savings. Mm -hmm. It's not wrong. I mean, it, it's just. It's older than some of the newer ones, you know. Well, tell them the difference of this data versus the new. So this is radio frequencies. So something else that's coming up through the through governments <laughs> is the safety of our systems. And here in the next two years or three years, we have to verify that we have a safe system or prove that our system is safe. This is one of the safer systems because it's a radio frequency. You can't hack it online. You can't hack it and turn it off. You have to be within a certain distance of these radio frequencies, and then it takes some time to find them. Okay. So it's a safe system as far as hacking is concerned. So he says, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Right. So some of the money, instead of like some of these isolation valves and, and some of these pressure sensors, some of those things we don't need to do right now, but we need to put a new drive on the 30 horse pump, and we need to be able to make those two pumps talk together with the skater. Mm -hmm. And how much money is that going to cost? Well, I need to get uh, Teton Communications in to, to verify um, that the, the drive that we put on the 10 horse if you remember from last month, it's a 24 volt system. It doesn't communicate with the 12 volt system that we have. There's some things that they, another little a translator, I think they call it, a little box that you can take the 24 volt system and translate into the SCADA. That is not on that list. I don't know how much that's going to cost. A new drive for the 30 horse is pretty close to the 13,000, 13 to 15,000 range. So, yeah, it is 13,000, right? So that'd be a three. Yeah. So. Like saying, yeah. because we've, since this list came out, Robert or uh, Jeff Cook has 
come and talk to us and said, well, it's... It's changed a little. It's changed a little. Some of the things that they're saying we need to fix, maybe we don't really need to fix. It's so, a little more manpower, so I guess, to run it this old way, but... Kind of what this secure. Jeff led Brian to believe is we don't necessarily need to look at a big water project right now. It feels like if you kind of bump your rates, bring in some more money, and just kind of knock these out. Like, there's still the meters that need to be replaced, that should have been replaced 10 years ago. Um, right. I feel like that's a higher priority than some of these. If we're going to have to put some money in there, some of these that, that, that I like the uh, they say the isolation valves, that's something that I can do on my own in the next year, year or two. They're not actually required in some of those areas. They would just be convenient. So like I say, we can shave some of that down and, and focus on and I like I say I don't know what the answer is on the, as far as that 24 volt system that's in there. Whether we go ahead and put two new drives in, I, I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping that there's a something a, a, a translator like they said that can make the 24 volt talk with the 12 volt systems. I don't have an answer for that because I I haven't been able to get all the uh, Teton communications yet. But if, if they can help us get those to speak with each other and we get a new drive for the 30 and keep the existing drive for the 10 and make them talk, then we're talking maybe less than 20,000. Somewhere in that 13 to 20,000 range. I, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna guess on whatever that translator thing is. We'll just keep working on it. So yeah, that's that's kind of up in the air. I. But in the meantime, we need to do some funds over there to take care of right. this. So all of those things do have to have some work. I mean, I think that's why part of the reason why he printed that is so that that you as a council are aware that there are. Things that need to be worked on. And this on. is just like some of it, not a full list yet. And some of it's just maintenance. There's some of those that the clay valve that is listed there, I, it's supposed to be rebuilt about every five years. I think that one was listed at 15 years ago. And we know it doesn't work. We've, we've proved that it doesn't work. So. So some of those things, I mean, is it important? Yes, can, it can go a little further on the back burner compared to like the drives. <clears throat> well, we discussed it's gonna take a while to get all this stuff figured out, so we'll just. I mean, we're covered. Yeah. I, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I mean, <clears throat> we're covered because right now the 10 horse is, it's doing its job. But it's it also wearing out. It is but it has a noisy bearing. Yeah, and it will have to probably be replaced sometime this year. Yeah. And that's a smaller, that's, I think, what did he, he listen about? $1,500, I think. A yeah. um, yeah. guy was talking to his nephew in one of the pump places down in Blackfoot, and he thinks that I need to get with him, i got to take pictures of it, and he's going to find out if he can actually rebuild that pump. Some of those smaller ones, it's cheaper to just buy new ones, but some of them can be rebuilt pretty easily. But we do have water. That 30 horse pump over here at the booster house, it will run on its own. I mean, the drive isn't completely fried. It will, it will run on it. It'll run all summer long. I just have to manually turn it on. And then we're, we're back to where we were last year. So that, and that's the, I guess that's the thing. I can, I can manually turn the 10 horsepower off and kick the 30 horse on it. But at night it runs when it's not yeah. necessary. 
but basically without having to run down there every time we have a water spike and turn one on that's that's ridiculous it's but we do have the well three is right now our backup so if the 10 horsepower fails for whatever reason whether we turn on a fire hydrant or everybody flushed at the same time the big well over at the well three will kick on and it will supply the town and we learned it takes about three minutes for it to kick about on. three minutes <laughs> so okay. i i do realize that your water pressure drops and it drops just just to within i have to start making phone calls to the state <laughs> So we're going to try and fix that too, but it does kick on. It does do what it's supposed to do. It will feed the city water. So we're not broke. We're just way behind on maintenance. Is that a better way to put it? Well, you can, you can give your maintenance report real quick too. Why not? And just updates on what you've been doing. So the first week in April, I had a great week. April 1st was my my official first day on the job. April 2nd, I, I ran away to Boise for a week. <laughs> and there was some great training. I got some hands-on experience on tearing hydrants, or the, the fire hydrants apart, and fixing them. That's something I never do. Something I don't think has been done in a long time. I don't think many of them have been run. But I have learned a lot about there's a new thing coming up and probably in the next month or so you'll be seeing some little flyers or some door hangers. There's a, they call it the lead copper rule. We have to verify what's in the city and what's hooked to our city lines and that's galvanized and copper lines. And they, they want us to eventually work with homeowners to get rid of all of their copper and galvanized that's hooked to the city line. We can't, we can't tell the homeowners to do anything inside their homes, but the transmission line from our, from our line into the house, they're looking to, within the next couple of years, having that all removed so that there's no more land. So I learned that, uh, like say, uh, Tuesday, I met with Robert Cook from Idaho Rural Water he says the system is running like it's supposed to. It has some hiccups, like we've just talked about. It needs some maintenance, but it can. It, we can be taking care of it, and it can be as inexpensive or as cheap as we want it to be. We can continue to fiddle with it and go another year, or we can start putting some money at it. That's kind of how we're sitting there. This week, uh, I. I read, I was going to bring you some pictures so you could see it, but my phone won't connect to the, the printer. <laughs> so I'll do it old, old school way the next time. But I've been down at, the, at our lagoons, um, had a lot of trees growing around there. I got most of them. The ones that I have to have hip waders, I didn't go out to get yet because I need a better pen. Pair of hip waders. My fishing ones leak. <laughs> I'm not going out there with leaky boots. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just don't want to. <laughs> but I did get most of the trees. That's three pickup loads of trees I hauled off of our lagoons. And our lagoons, we are pumping back into our lagoons as of today. We were pumping to the fur. We have been. So just uh, uh, kind of let you know what we've been doing. We started on the 18th of last month pumping to Firth. And we stopped today. And we're about an hour, an hour separate from when we started to when we shut it off. But 24 days. And we did some math earlier, and so this math will change, Robin. But in 24 days, we pumped 681,988 gallons down the Firth. Wow. Okay, so just to give you a perspective of what that is, that's 28,416 gallons a day. 
And to break it down a little bit further, because you don't think of, and you're like me, I, before I started doing this, I had, I turn the water on, it's there, I flush the toilet, it goes away, you never think about it. But that's 183 gallons a day per home. Just so you know. And that's including medical supreme. Yeah. So that so it's it's kind of a it's an average. So obviously if there's only one person living in a home, it's probably different than that sounds like a lot though. Like, you know, the so the average is three fifty. What they consider the equivalent of oil unit is three hundred fifty gallons a day. Well how much water yeah. is pumped every day? That oh, pump oh. what did he tell us the other day? It's a lot. It's it's rated it. I want to say when we were first looking 3,600 gallons a minute when we were looking like the first that. time on a Saturday morning wasn't it like 500 gallons ish a minute like in the morning right that's how much water is being consumed now that's just for base salt yeah if you can figure like out of falls or bigger cities we were at the first uh, facility down there their sewer and they were talking about some of these cities that go through millions of gallons. Yeah. Millions, like within hours, and it's, it's, it's crazy, but it's pretty interesting to think about. So yeah, we really don't know, like, we don't, until you're seeing it, you, you don't realize how much, and maybe that's not as much as some places are going through, maybe we're below the average, but it blew my mind. Well, it's been eye-opening for me to be on this side of the, like the bills and the stuff. So yeah, it's over two hundred. It's a different perspective. Two hundred eighty dollars a month between the two pumps you're only paying for electric bill. So that's what it's costing. So yeah, everything's up and going. That's yeah. we're doing good. I think. Okay. So we're gonna continue yeah. on to. <laughs> we're we're doing some more cleanup. I don't know if you have gone past the, the well house right over here. I smoothed it out, got rid of all the garbage that was collecting against the fence for the last year. Part of that was, I, I, I've seen it, I know it's there, but my wife held me hard about that one. <laughs> she says, you're working there now, go take care of it. So, <laughs> so I did. I, so as you as you drive around and you see some of the buildings and you I see me cleaning out, I think cleaned out the office over here. Yeah. When I walked out. in there, it's like, oh. We're, there's still more that needs to be done. <laughs> yeah, but there is, but you could tell a dent. The for sure. the well houses are all supposed to be swept and washed several times a year. We're getting on it. We'll get on a schedule to where they're clean and nice. So. Okay. Yeah. You already know, Brian. But just be careful when you get there. Trees out from the lagoon because we have a clay liner. We're not pulling them. Yeah, we're, we're just going to make pulling. sure because we just did that secret yeah. drink. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were over no, there no. talking about that. They don't, don't buy them or don't pull them. We'll poke lots of holes in the bottom. So. <laughs> <laughs> it does make it less yeah. that we have to pump down the first thing. <laughs> so, nine years from now, we'll fail the secret drink test and then we'll be into a million dollars. No, no, no they're all so. being cut. And I, I had some. Well, don't you want that? Oh, you don't want it. <laughs> I had some fantastic pictures. There's one on the very far side that the it's an elm tree that actually tipped over at some point, where a guy didn't finish cutting it all the way. It, it's actually growing roots. Oh, yeah. So there's a branch out in the water, and I think, okay, I'm going to cut it off right there and drag it in. No, it's growing roots. It's like a like a. Clear down in there. I mean, so if you've got this much roots trying to go through all that sewage water down to get into the dirt, it's like hydroponics. It's you know, it sure. is. <laughs> so yeah, if you ever look at hydroponics and you see that it's working in those trees, I was amazed. I kept pulling on that thing, going like, "What is holding it?" When I find it, it's yeah, they're roots. <laughs> they're pretty healthy. <laughs> So talking about trees, we're going to do a cleanup this Saturday, uh, City of Bay Salt with the church. So and before you 
Can I go back to the buns? Can we move any over to water? Like, can we get the VFD going? Things like that. Do we have to vote on it? If you're going to move your budget, I, I would. Because so. yeah. it's outside of your normal budget. So I think council should approve that. And then we'll have to do, like, in the amended budget. Okay. The end will do a public hearing. So if you it. move water, uh, if you move money over into water and then we end up not spending as much as she moves? Can we yeah, move well, it back to the same? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. The same, same. Mm -hmm. yeah, so anything within the normal budget, the mayor would have discretion to do. This is outside of that, so yeah. the council will approve it. And how much? I don't. It sounded like 20 you took care of the immediately. Is that a that good would, start? That would be a good start. So yeah, that's, that's um, we're going to meet nine o'clock in the morning and we're going to run trailers around and skidster and chainsaws and just kind of clean up all the trees around that people put out and take it to the uh, burn pile down there. So that's, so that's the plan. So like, like Kitty Corner from your place, you've got trees in his yard. Do we, Garbage and stuff. Do we no, get their that. trees that are... I haven't heard from no. them. And if it's not on the side, that I would... We're not going to trim trees. We're not going to drag it out of people's yards unless they're preparing to help out with that. Uh, but if it's in the call. city right away and it's piled in, it'll take it. I think that's how they work. Because uh, we don't want to be in people's yards. So we know about how many people are going to... We'll do what we can. We'll do it for a half day and whatever we need to. Okay. Uh, Kyle Jones. That's me. I've been here a couple times, but I just wanted to just stop back by and catch up with everybody, make sure that you know that Tarpa Road Engineering or HLE's here and available to help. And, um, we've got a couple things. Obviously, water is one. Robin mentioned we guys are going to discuss tonight. And then your business transportation plan. You've probably been or told already that LTAC awarded you guys for the transportation plan. So you get going on that uh, coming in September. Sorry, October 1st, that's when you be available. Uh, so something for you guys to keep in mind uh, as you select an engineer for that. Uh, so just want to make sure you in and give you an update of where we are and here to help. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Gil, proposing permits for soliciting. All right, so yeah, I'll show you a copy of it. And, uh, Basically, why I uh, want to put this out is because I'm sick and tired of these people coming around and getting hit two or three times in a day when they're hitting the, hitting the, hitting the uh, city. And the attitude of them are, you know, once you tell them to go away, they you know, get real uppy about it. And one way to do this is, also, is to limit them coming in here and to get have a revenue stream for the city when they do come in. Um, so basically, anyone going door to door to solicit information or sell a product or solicit to make an appointment to discuss, uh, sell, or provide information about a product or to gather information from residents or to solicit donations, funds, or other monies must be issued a permit uh, from the city clerk. Each person, each person must have a permit issued in their name and the name of the organization they're representing. Uh, and I have it on there as permit fees. And one thing I forgot to put in here, the permits are good for calendar month only. So they get a month, uh, permit for the, the month of June. You get a permit for August, whatever. All right, for each individual, it's a $15 fee for the month. For the company sponsoring individuals, the company also has to pay a fee of $25. Um, exceptions are like religious organizations, established, established emergency relief organizations such as American Red Cross, school groups, established nonprofits such as the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. Fines. Anyone, any, anyone uh, caught soliciting without a permit, it's a 
per person fine. Any organization bringing people in without a permit is a $1,500 fine for the organization. Uh, persons without a permit who refuse to cease and desist when instructed to by any resident is a is, uh, $1,000 in addition to the $500 uh, fine of not having a permit. And this is basically to get people to stop harassing our, our citizens and provide well, the companies that want to, do, want to come in here anyways for them to uh, provide a revenue stream for the city. So is that like a solar company coming around? Or the, or the, uh, the window, window and siding guys that come around every, every two or three months. Well, she must be getting out a lot, eh? <laughs> so you said, I've never had them get my place. Well, well they, they probably get when you're not there. <laughs> but yeah, I've... Uh, I've left the camera out. Yeah, they... they uh, I'll let them come around. I, I, I watch them go, go over to my uh, my daughter's place. And she tells them, no, get out get out of here. They'll come over to mine. I'll tell them, I'll ask them, do you have a print? Yeah, you do. Let's see it. Oh, my manager has it. I said, no, you don't have one because you haven't gotten one from the city. You need to leave. Before I call the sheriff's department, and then they'll leave when I threaten to call the sheriff's department on. But sometimes they don't. Sometimes they they like like they'll leave, and I'll see them elsewhere in town, walking around, still you know, going door to door. And you know, it's one of those things. that's just you know, it, I mean, it's totally rude of them. You know, if, you know, if they're not going to uh, if they're not going to first check the city if they need a permit, which currently we don't issue. But you know, when they get told, hey, no, you need to leave, so and they refuse to leave. Here's my thoughts: is I, I don't want door-to-door -door salespeople, but I think it takes their ability away to make nope. a living. They'll take their ability away. They I just also think we, yeah. but do we have like the real backing to really like? That's what I was wondering. It's large as well. So, so Blackwood has something very similar. I have no yeah. question about it. I mean, but um, this, if you, it's largely the same conversation we just had about your right away thing. Obviously, number one, you have to be able to handle issuing permits. Um, you know, and they could be free for now until you get it on your resolution, so we didn't have to have a public hearing for it. But. Um, the enforcement of it would be just a you know standard misdemeanor like any other violation of your city codes, um, you know. So there would be some enforcement techniques there through the sheriff's office. It would be the enforcement of it. But it's like it's largely the same conversation we had with you right away. I mean, if you're going to require a permit. Well, that takes manpower to do. Yeah. And so the question is, how do you feel about it? How do I feel yeah. about it? Solicitors. Uh, I hate them, but. I am nice to him, and then I just say, you know, I'm not interested, and I've never had one come back that I've you, asked to leave. How do you feel about it? Don't know. I think I'm like anybody else. They find it quite annoying. You don't have and, to answer at the door. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, good. <laughs> no, I've I've walked away from them before because yeah. I'm like, I am working. Just because you see me at my house, I'm working. I'm going back to work. Um, but you can simply put a no soliciting on the door. Also. That's what I was well, going to say. And the, the other thing I was going to add, so Idaho here about three years ago changed their trespassing statute. When it's a home, it's automatically a trespass if they're not wanted. So they do have to immediately leave and tell them you're off. So there is a trespassing law in your place that is there. Well, my daughter in law, son, they live in Shelley, and they just have a little. No, right by their doorbell, no soliciting. I have one too, and some of them don't pay attention, some do. I've seen some walk away when they see it. Let's see. And I think it's going to be the same thing about this. I don't know. Well, and I, and I just feel like, too, you can have all these laws, but to enforce them. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we don't have. That's why, I mean, we're a little this town. Would be a, this would be a sheriff call, just like a trespasser or anything else. Why don't we. So the trespass law already covers this, basically. Well, so if, if anybody comes on your property and you tell them to leave and they don't immediately leave, that's a trespass. And it's actually automatically trespass if you have a fence or it's a you know, yard. Yeah. It changed the law, which is just kind of strange the way they did it. But um, if somebody comes on your property, uh, it's a trespass if you're, they're not wanted. So I mean, it's a call on the sheriff to get them off. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the trespass call on the sheriff. 
that if they DNA misdemeanor, they can be go to jail time, and then they're hurt in jail, they can come back at us. Yeah. However, if it's just fines only like this is, there's no, no you're jail not, time. You're not going to do a civil penalty. You're going to do a civil penalty. You're going to want it to be a misdemeanor. Yeah, but I mean, you know, but, uh, but the misdemeanor doesn't have to have jail time included on, as an option. No, no, you can. Yeah, that's why I say you do. You do, so it's fines well, only. Right. If you're going to do a misdemeanor, you're going to want jail time on it. Right. I mean, it's the risk of the medical bills, but like I say, that's uh, you want that. Um, I mean, if you're going to make it, if you're going to take the time to make it an ordinance, you want it enforceable. Yeah. So you know, the standard misdemeanor always has you know, up to one year in jail. Okay. I guess we're just going to have to figure this one out. Right. Just think about it. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, like I said, it's, you know, this is the it's only way possible you know, for generating. And maybe another safe. thing that you could do is how many other people in the community would support it. I think, I think you Maybe know. you could put together some signatures. I don't know. Then we know. Is it yeah. everybody that wants it? I would, I would think that. Half the people in the city wanted it, then that would be okay. But if two or three people only, I don't think that would be something. Else. I think that's like maybe some people like that and they want that. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not like that's all that Don gets to. I know, Don, he's like, <laughs> oh my lord. Last time the window guy came over to my house, I invited him in for corn. We had some corn and talked, and well, he didn't sell me that. Well, no, I bought a bottle because I'm like, you know what, you're a good dude. And I caught home and I was like, why did you find that dang thing? <laughs> it doesn't oh, work. Guy, he's out there in the working and tromping and heat of the sun. Like, cleaning the tires and you know, like, clean like a little hole in your <laughs> dirty window. <laughs> I left that port hole for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and we had one show up, but we went, you know, to work out in a remote area. And this one boy had walked all the way down the road to the edge, a lot of dead head, and he came up and he was so aggravated, you know, got him a gator and stuff. But then he sat there and told probably the worst racist jokes you've ever heard. <laughs> and it was, you know, uh, it was an uh, African American kid from down south, but I mean, he just went on and we're all kind of uncomfortable because it's like, <laughs> <laughs> do you laugh? Do you not? Do you, you know, I mean, it was just some of the worst, worst things you've ever heard. You, you, you know what? I kind of respect those guys because they are out, you know, doing something. Really, mm -hmm. think about it. How many people just do nothing? So they're out trying to make a living. So I'm kind of okay with it, and I'm, I'm easy with people anyway. So. And maybe that's our self-employed. Yeah. Friend. I don't know. Give them a drink, chit chat with them. They're, they're trying just like we all try. So I too have bought the cleaner. Yes, and did on it. Okay. Stuff on he would, I had actually just washed my windows. I was out there washing when he came and he was like, Oh, you've done a good job, but your car tires are dirty. And I was like, oh, And he cleaned them, so I was like, and I too was like, oh man, he really did this big old, and I'm, I think it was that guy. <laughs> and I was like, man, I really feel bad, but that's good really did shine it up. But they are always. Oh. And it smells better than Windex. Yeah. <laughs> so I it on place too. And, and they lick it. Yeah, yep. yeah. When he ate it, I pulled it out and then licked it, and I was like, ooh. Oh, it's I like, I got it right now. I do have a funny one to tell you though. So when I was a kid, this was about back in the 70s when diesel was you know, like 15 cents a gallon for farm diesel. Anyway, the guy had come through and my mom, it was a weed killer. And this stuff was great. It killed all these weeds and she paid like $400 for this 50 gallon drum with this weed killer with diesel. Oh. <laughs> I guess I've never seen this window guy before. Mm -hmm. I didn't you said that, I was like, oh, I reminded him. You'd be surprised how people come in my foyer thinking they can just come on in. I'm like, in front of my house, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. I think that concludes. Well, Is there anything no, else? I know Trina's here. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask the council, um, our members are ordered to the, the bill of the water. How much rates? One more time. Are you ready for something? Yes. Are you kind of late. Yes. I'm here in Harris County. I'm here in Harris County. This water is in the project. We have 
got to come with that. Water mining project that you got to come out of. Whatever you sent in the mail. Oh, in all the water mining. Yes. Oh, so so are they doing any? Yes. What all are they doing? Any, what all are we doing? We're going to the road. No. More the water maintenance is we're having competition with the water maintenance. Everything is just having supply issues. Supply issues. So no digging, no construction. We're not the first. No digging, no updating and fixing our water. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So that's, that's why they 
So that's, that's why. I was going to say, Guy was telling me that this Goshen Road, Guy was telling me that this Goshen city Road to the city limit and Oregon Road, city limit to city limit, is the same thing. It's a county road that city maintains. It's a county road that city maintains. So the other thing I have for you, our, thing I have. street sign by our house, our, our address street is sign like on the by our house, our address is 642, like on the corner, um, our address Kevin is 647, I think Kevin Texas, is 648 or 648 or something, but on our side, yeah, which is beyond, beyond the other side of the sign, yeah, which is beyond the other side of the road sign says 650, and so guess who gets all the packages, so guess who gets all the packages, I'm going to apply to UPS and be like, hey, I'm going to drop off my money, baby. Like, hey, I have to go money for him. And then I have to go money for him. And then we also disagree with trucks that and stop in our house. And then we also disagree with in the maps for Supreme, but it brings you to the house. So I'm like, it brings you to the house. So I'm like, everybody wants to come to my house. Everybody wants to come to my house. Oh, really? So you're using Google Maps, you've got to go to Google Maps. So yeah, so somewhere where they put up that road. Yeah, so somewhere where they put up that road. So they used to have my house four blocks. They used to have, have my house okay, well, four blocks. So I think our road sign used to be like 645. Let Brian just kind of figure out whatever. Let's let Brian go some time. I will walk into that. But I have no problems with that. It doesn't sound like our city. But I have no problems with it. It doesn't sound like our city. It's helpful to figure out how to do it. How to do it. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> well, but if they are going to be cramped or wrong, well, but if they are going to be cramped or wrong, that's what it's called. The county would have to throw a fit about it. The, the county would have to throw a fit about it. That's why the one three packages at the road would get tore up. That's why the one when they redo it, they just tore up. That's the road. When they redo it, they just tore up. That road would be a good time. Because it's not just the wind. That's why it would be a good time. Because it's not just the wind. And that's the that's the one that they're gonna wind the road. That's the that's the one that they're gonna it's not the windmills, it's it's the line. It's not the windmills, it's the line there's line. I thought the mine was supposed to be as Wolverine road. I thought the mine was supposed to be as Wolverine Well, we'll see. <laughs> I think we're all done. We'll see. Hey, I think we're all down. We'll see. Hey, I think we're all down. I'll keep you motion to adjourn. I'll keep you motion to adjourn. Joey, you can't watch him. We have to. I mean, you're just the mayor of Connie's motion to adjourn. I mean, you're just the mayor of Connie's motion to adjourn. I mean, you're just the mayor of Connie's motion to adjourn. I mean, you're just the mayor of Connie's motion to adjourn. I mean, you're just the mayor of Connie's motion to adjourn.